Okay, we're pleased to have with us our school board member and he's running for city council, Oscar De La Torre. Uh, Oscar, thanks so much for uh, joining us. And do you wanna just start by just talking about why you're running for city council this year? Yes, uh, I'm running for city council uh, to shine a light on a problem that we can no longer ignore or sign off on. The current city council has failed our residents because they have put personal and other ambitions before the well-being of our residents. I'm running to fight for and advance environmental justice. The current city council has failed to even agendize a discussion on the methane emanating from the industrial landfill under Gandara Park. I'm running because we have a homelessness, substance abuse, and mental health crisis on our streets. And as the founder of a youth center that has addressed gang violence successfully, I know my perspective and leadership is needed now on our city council. The current incumbents continue to ignore the demands of youth of color to remove a racist mural that adorns the city, uh, the entrance to our city hall. The current city council voted to spend millions of taxpayer dollars to protect their position and power in a voting rights lawsuit, but refused to defend more than 100 seniors and low income residents living at Village Trailer Park. Our city council's failure to hold our police department accountable is partly responsible for a recent settlement of more than 42 million to 28 victims of child abuse at the hands of staff and volunteers at the Police Activities League in Santa Monica. While the nation calls for a reallocation of law enforcement um, dollars to fund social services in an equitable basis, our city council gave more to police without leveraging for police and reforms. I'm running because we, not, we cannot be complicit to this abuse and misuse of power. We must hold elected officials accountable to change the culture uh, that currently exists within our city government. And um, that's that, in a nutshell, that's why I'm running. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Oscar. Um, so I wanted to start by asking you about the issue that you're kind of most known for, which is um, the uh, trying to see districts come in, uh, districts on the city council. And uh, of course, we just had uh, the results of the, the lawsuit and it's being appealed and without needing to comment on the lawsuit in any way. Um, I just wanted to ask you, um, because uh, uh, one of the uh, criticisms that you hear about districts in Santa Monica is that because the city is so small and um, the Hispanic and black populations are not necessarily geographically centered, that you may actually dilute the minority uh, ability to uh, have power in the city because they're so concentrated in one area that even if they did win that election, it would just be one member. Whereas the other, you may actually have an all white or anti-PICO majority in a sense. Uh, so what's your response to that? Because I totally understand the point that you're making about wanting to empower um, the people in the Pico district, but I think the main criticism I've heard about that is that um, you may it could actually create the opposite effect. Yeah, well, thank you. That's a, a very good question, John. I appreciate that question. Uh, first of all, growing up in the Pico, uh, sorry about that. Go ahead. You can start over again, Oscar. Yeah. Um, you know, for, uh, first off, you know, I was born and raised in the Pico neighborhood, and I can tell you that the lack of political representation. Uh, cause real harm. I mean, everything from gun violence and gang violence, the, the poverty, the marginalization, the environmental dumping. Um, you know, those are those are all uh, historic and those were all proven in court, you know. Um, so, so for me, uh, if there's a better remedy, you know, to deal with the historic marginalization of people of color in the Pico neighborhood, I'm open to it. The California Voting Rights Act uh, provided one remedy um, and we exercised our right to, to use that law. Now, the, um, in terms of Latino, the concentration of Latinos in the Pico neighborhood, what we've learned is, is that Terry O'Day, for example, who lives in the Pico neighborhood, uh, he could ignore us because he can get his votes north of Montana or south of Ocean Park, and he knows that. So uh, if, I would hope that if he knows 30%, you know, of the electorate in that district, in the Pico district, um, you know, are Latino, that he wouldn't be able to ignore us. So I would say, you know, just from practical experience that we wouldn't be ignored or disrespected the way we have been uh, by people like Terry O'Day uh, in the Pico neighborhood if we would have a district. So the idea of us having more influence, um, which the CVRA calls for that, it's not just about a majority minor, uh, minority district, it also uh, talks about if uh, the at-large election system dilutes the influence of our, um, 
of us, you know, in the election, then it should be utilized. And that's why uh, we're challenging uh, the appeals court decision. Ultimately, it'll be decided by the South, uh, Supreme Court of California, and uh, we'll live with the consequences of that. I just feel that it's better to have, I mean, I'm look, I'm one um, school board member right now on the school board. And there's times that I vote alone, but I can tell you that if, if I, if not for me being there in the discussions and not advocating internally within the system, uh, we wouldn't have equity, we wouldn't have social justice, we wouldn't have ethnic studies, or we wouldn't have uh, some of the uh, improvements that we've seen in the Southside schools. You know, usually, I mean, in Santa Monica, we've had a divide already. That's the other thing too that, that we have to realize is that no one's talking about how the concentration of power has always been on the north side of our city, even today on our school board, our college board, and our city council. And I know that um, district elections is not, you know, the only solution, but it was, you know, but it was the, it was the best solution that we had, you know, uh, to, to, to work with. Got it. So, so um, with that in mind, are, you're not, are you concerned at all that if there was a peak, if there were seven districts or some other formulation of like that, that um, the, the members of the city council who represent north of Montana or Wilmont or other neighborhoods, uh, you know, might vote in ways that are antithetical to your progressive values? No, no, I think quite the opposite. We're a small city. Um, I mean, look, uh, Sue Hemmerich, she lives north of Montana and she's a very compassionate person. I mean, all her work that I've seen and her votes, it, it reflects the values of the city. Um, you know, renters are still gonna be 70% of the electorate. Democrats are gonna still be more than 70% of the electorate. Uh, you will not be able to be elected in the city in terms of having a majority on the city council if you're not for rent control and if you're not a Democrat. And uh, we, we, you know, we have progressive values and I consider myself a very strong progressive and I, I won five election endorsement, you know, with the endorsement of this club. So I think as long as um, our institutions like, you know, the Santa Monica Democratic Club and, and SMER and other groups are still active, um, you know, elected officials are, 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 are going to have to address progressive uh, issues. I, I don't see that the North Siders would be voting against the South Siders. I think it'll come down to you know, now you're looking at crime, it impacts everybody. I mean, you know, north side, south side, everybody's being, is dealing with the homelessness. The crisis that we're dealing with now, they cut across all neighborhood lines. And that's why I think people are gonna wanna vote for change in this election. Got it, thanks. Uh, Mike, yeah, Mike Sola. Hey, Oscar. So I wanna hey, ask hi, a Mike. question since you mentioned rent control. So I'm looking at your survey and you marked down that on Proposition 21, which would repeal Costa Hawkins and return to Santa Monica the decision about whether to extend rent control to buildings that are, once they're 15 years old and would return to Santa Monica the decision about whether there should be limits on vacancy uh, increases, which have resulted at least in the current unregulated world of anything that's affordable becoming completely unaffordable. So could you explain why you're still undecided on that issue? Oh, well, no, I'm, I'm I'm, I have decided. When I, when I turned this uh, questionnaire in, I was undecided because I hadn't really, uh, honestly, I didn't read it all, but now uh, I'm for Prop 21. And okay. I can say this, um, as, a, as a small property owner, you know, I own a fourplex. I live in one of the units and my sister lives in the other unit. That's the only way we'd be able to afford to live in Santa Monica. Uh, I just did a seismic retrofit, which co cost me uh, close to like almost sixty thousand dollars. You know, um, that was really hard on, my, on on me and my family. And um, aside from the increase in water rates and all that, and and with that, I still support rent control. And I haven't raised the rent on my tenants for the past five years. And to and and I had you know the opportunity to do that this time. And because of COVID, and one of my tenants is having a hard time with work, she uh, lost hours. I told her that she she doesn't have to worry about. Uh, paying any increase uh, again. So in any right. case, uh, my behavior, you know, what I do uh, with my pocketbook, it says a lot, the, the actions that I take. I, I support rent control and I support the repeal of Costa Hawkins, uh, even though it's against my own self-interest because I think that the crisis that we have at hand right now with uh, housing is something that all of us need to make sacrifices to repair. Great, thank you. And I, I understand that with everything going on, it might have taken you a while to read all of the, yeah. uh, the props. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, uh, Patricia. Uh, 
Okay, Oscar. I I saw something on your on your um, questionnaire that caught me totally off balance because I had no idea about it. And it says that your employer is also the California or Cal. Cal Racing Cares. And I looked it up online and all I could find out was about thoroughbred horses. Is that the Cal Cares, the Cal Racing Cares you work for? Yeah, yeah, correct. Uh, they, it's a nonprofit that, uh, that works on what they call the backstretch. So they support aftercare for uh, thoroughbred horses and also they support backstretch workers who take care of the horses. And this is, uh, I started working with the uh, backstretch community as they feared losing their jobs. A lot of them are immigrants. Uh, uh, just very vulnerable, you know, to ice raids, and they were very concerned. And a friend of mine, Hector Palma, uh, brought me in, and I've been working with them. And uh, I, I, uh, I became a consultant because they saw that they had a need for someone to connect up with, with these workers that, that are not unionized. And so we wanted to provide some support for them as well. Very so I'm cool. working, I'm working, yeah. Do you get to visit the horses at all? Yes, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a... Uh, well, before COVID, they would allow us to go back there. Since COVID, right. they, uh, there's no restrictions. But I have had the opportunity to understand the work of the backstretch workers. My uncle used to work at Hollywood Park, so I knew a little bit about it. And I love horses. Um, so I've been able to really understand more about horse racing, the, the horse racing industry. Uh, but primarily, my job is to work uh, with the backstretch workers, which is about 850 of them at Santa Anita alone. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Who's next? Uh, Amy. Um, thank you, Oscar, for coming forward and filling out uh, the extensive amount of uh, questions that we ask on our uh, intake form. Uh, one of the things that brought my brought my eyes to the attention of your question regarding um, public safety. And, a, and the establishment of a public safety task force on steroids. Um, I don't know what that would look like and who would run it and who would be asked to be part of that. Can you give us a little bit more of what that idea is and how you came about thinking about that? Yeah, thank you very much, Amy, for that question. Um, you know, we have, a, I think, an antiquated public safety model right now that pretty much depends too much on law enforcement, you know, to, uh, to help deal with some of the social issues that we're dealing with. And law enforcement wasn't trained, you know, to deal with the problems that they're having to deal with right now, which is mostly deal with homelessness and people that are, you know, overdosing. And it's more like medical issues and uh, case management type issues than what law enforcement is trained to do. So what I'd like to do, and we did this uh, dealing with the gang problem um, in the city of Santa Monica, it's called Collective Impact. The idea that you bring like probation, the nonprofits, the schools, um, all the key stakeholders that have, you know, in this case, it would be neighborhood watch groups, uh, neighborhood associations, um, merchant associations, like, you know, in the Pico neighborhood, we have the uh, PIO, Pico Improvement Organization. The idea is to bring all the stakeholders together to identify, you know, look at the data that we want to look at. So uh, in this case, it would be crime rates, you know, car break-ins, that type of thing, burglaries. So be data driven, we share the data, we talk about what's going on, we share information. Um, you know, we, we would have sort of law enforcement uh, and private security as well. I mean, I, I would envision that every neighborhood group would have a uh, sort of like what happens north of Montana where you have police and you have West Tech Patrol or you have like a private uh, security. And I would, I would envision something that is not as expensive uh, as law enforcement, but like a, pri a well-trained private security that's uh, on call 24 seven for the neighborhood, um, for the neighborhood, every neighborhood. So every neighborhood would have, you know, not just a group of volunteers, but staff, you know, working with uh, neighborhood leaders so, uh, to address the crime problems um, and another social issue that, that might be happening at the neighborhood level. The idea is like to really focus on each neighborhood because every neighborhood is different. Okay, who's next? Uh, Ed. Hi, Oscar. Hey, Ed. <clears throat> hey, um, listen, there are two issues that I've been asking the other council candidates as well, and, and they're the, the two big development issues. And, uh, and also because I'm in the Wilmot 
you know, neighborhood and on the Beaumont board as well. And this is, and the, and the Miramar issue has been the primary issue there for more than eight years. So uh, regarding the Miramar, the big opposition right now is that the condos on top will not put any TOT revenue into the city treasury. So the question is, if the Miramar were to offer to pay to the city the value of renting all of those condos out, the value of that TOT, even though they don't rent them out, would that remove any objection you might have to the proposed Miramar from, your, uh, from any objection? And then the second question is, I'll just ask it right now, regarding 4th and Arizona. We know that the um, Unite Here Local 11 is all in in favor of what's going up there. And all of the neighborhood groups across the city are all in against it. How, where are you? How, how, are you uh, how are you handling that? Yeah, thank you, Ed. That's a very good question. I think we should get the most uh, for our residents, the most for our workers possible. And I, and I would not have voted yes on the fourth and Arizona project as is, because I think it didn't do enough. It didn't guarantee, you know, the type of housing that we need for our workers, uh, our hospitality workers, and our low income residents. And it didn't guarantee anything in terms of entrepreneurship opportunities uh, and subsidized commercial space for our residents. So I would have voted no because I don't think uh, we, we were getting enough from public space. I mean, this is very um, scarce. You know, this is a scarce resource, a valuable resource. And I would uh, want to get as much as possible for our residents and for our workforce. So um, on that, on the second issue is the Fairmont Miramar. Uh, you know, I, I, again, I think it goes back to can we, how can we get the most for our residents, you know? And, and if, uh, if they're, if I think that's smart, because usually they come in and they say, we want the condos and then we fight that out and then we, you know, get something in return. But if they're saying, look, whatever you would get from us in terms of, uh, hotel rooms, you know, TOT, uh, we will pay for that. I mean, that's smart. I've never heard of that, but I think that's good. Um, you know, we, we need to make sure that, that, um, that, that we have responsible development that's a, that doesn't destroy the character and scale of neighborhoods. The downtown sector is where you want to have some density, though. I do agree with that. But I know there's residents close by, and I know that the Huntley has a problem with the building going too high and uh, interfering with... Um, with ocean views and all that. So we have to just be respectful. And it sounds like they have decreased the height. So I think the project is a lot better than when it was first introduced. Um, I, I would still review it one more time to make sure we're getting the most and the best that we can. I mean, you know, these uh, developers make a lot of money and I would really want to comb through how, you know, their, their prospectus and how much money they're going to make so that we can show them that, you know, this is an area that I think you can afford to give more. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, uh, thanks. That's all the time we've got, Oscar. So uh, thanks so much for coming by, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you all very much. I really appreciate your uh, continued support and uh, know that as a Democrat, you know, I'm gonna work hard to represent our values on the city council as I have on the school board. God bless you all, thank you. Thanks a lot.